The next session, we are going to hear from Professor Tina Choi, who is an expert in brand marketing, you know, this kind of thing that I don't know much about. So I'm also very much looking forward to hearing uh, during this communication workshop. Okay, so uh, Tina, yeah. floor is yours. So uh, I just want to echo a bit as an alumni. So uh, sooner or later, I will share my background to you guys. But as an audience, like every one of you here today, so what my impression was that, so I listened to a lot of advertising messages, right? So this school must select some best students, which I cannot be some of them. So is this something unreal? You have some self-doubt in mind right now, isn't it? So whenever you join a lot of info sections, info days, or maybe other MBA program, it's fair to do the comparison. It's smart to do some comparison before you pick the cherry one. However, however, I can share with you in this session, you can do it. You can do it. So I witnessed all the changes from Jesse and also Frank. They are also my students as well as uh, Olivia as well. Uh, she joined my applied entrepreneurship courses and I actually witnessed their transformation. Yeah, I shared similar feeling like you guys when I seek for my further study as a doctoral student, as a master's student. And finally, I chose this program as well. So I was the EMBA alumni as well. Okay, so I will share some more stuff with you soon. So this is my um, job experience. So I will not go through it one by one unless you join MBA program and I will share some more with you. But uh, what Wen has just mentioned right now, career progression, career switching, as well as entrepreneurship program, I experienced them all. Yeah, so originally I start my career soon after my graduation in FMCG. So it's fall into the list, which Wen has just mentioned. So if I join it right now, like you guys, I should have the discount. But at that moment, I don't have, but I still join the program. Yeah, so this is how I grew up my career. And um, during my study, when I was in CUHK, I actually switched jobs and also get career progressions. So the tuition fee is actually not that expensive. It's actually worth it because I earn much more than the tuition fee after the graduation. Yeah, I don't believe that I can do it when I was just like all of you here sitting today. And then after the graduation, I decide to get all the transferable skill set and change from FMCG industry. I was already the associate director in Johnson & Johnson. Actually, it's a very promising career. However, I decide to stop all of that because in CHK, I learned that there are two megatrends. The first megatrend is if there's no technology in your field, there will be no future. And the second point is that I want to have my own company someday. So with that two great ideas and mega trend in mind, so I decided to put down all the things that I have built in decades. Don't estimate how old that I am, sorry. <laughs> it's the, always the secret of female. So anyway, I dropped all the things that I have built for 10 to 15 years, yeah. So like some of you, maybe this is the bottleneck of your career right now. So you, are, you have a very good ideas in some big corporation, but there is something just like a blockage and you don't know how to progress. So this is exactly why I was there sitting like you guys and finding something, maybe going back to school and get another degree and I can have some career progression. That's it. And I can do it. So that's why I promote from Leslie to Johnson & Johnson. And then after graduation, I decide to find one technological company. So I have no tech background. All the way long, I sell shampoo, I sell, I sell um, shower gel, okay, cosmetic stuff, even though pharmaceutical things. But after studying here, so I learned a lot of different concepts and also it's more than my horizon, and I met a lot of good alumni, and they encouraged me. They told me in a good way, Tina, you know, even though someday you are the general manager in Hong Kong, it's really small. 
they are not intentionally to, you know, tears on me or they laugh at me. No, they just encourage me and ask me to challenge myself. Maybe you can be a regional head. So that's why after graduation, I went to Dyson. And then I was the North Asia um, head of sales. And no one believed that I can get the offer because all my competitors are from McKinsey, Bain, Apple, Microsoft, and they are also selling maybe Sony. They are also selling consumer electronics and they have good experience in technological industry. But I was just a girl who sell, you know, cosmetics, all the things that you can find in Manning's, Watson's, Tech and Shops. So that is exactly the beauty how CHK has given to me. Yeah, so if you want to know about it, join us. Okay, we will tell you the secret later. And in academia side, uh, why I was teaching in CHK, don't get me wrong, I'm actually a part-time professor, I'm not a full-time here. So I have my own work and company. So to make it quick, I know we are one hour of time. So I'm now a slasher. So previously, I'm a pure corporate citizen. So after you know building up the brand of Dyson in region, so I think all of the ladies are very fancy about the air wrap and also supersonic. It is actually they are actually my babies. So I co-developed with the engineer in UK, and we build the brands here. We build the products here. So I brought up such kind of concept which Franken has mentioned just now, entrepreneurship. And finally, three years later, I found that I earned quite a lot of money for the, for the family business, for Dyson's. And they use and waste my money to buy, you know, a lot of helicopters for their transportation and thrive on Maserati instead of, you know, using a reasonable spending on my marketing budgets. So that's why I, I actually contribute 85% of profit in Dyson because the North Asia region altogether, we are the big profit host of total Dyson business. So I get all this kind of experience and start my slash life. And this is the concept which I learned in Silicon Valley as well when I was studying in CHK, because at that moment back to 2017, there are a lot of slasher in Bay Area. And what's what happened, I have the field visit at that moment. And I learned from one of the people in the big tech companies and they share with me, I was actually a bartender at Light. Oh, can you do it? Yes, I'm engineer in the daytime and bartender at nighttime. So I challenged myself, why not? Why can't I do the similar things? So this is uh, actually briefly how I slice myself right now. So I have teaching life. I'm not a full-time professor. I teaching part-time here. So if you are studying part-time, most of the time you can meet me. Actually full-time student as well. I teach elective courses. And I have the commercialization life. So I have a company and I work for a listed company as a chief commercialization and communication officer right now. And I also have my uh, startup as well as I help Professor Wilson Chow with start the Applied Entrepreneurship course, which all of the students here, they have mentioned. And I hope it's can, it will be back very soon, I hope. And at the same time, I'm also an investor. So you see, I'm working as an executive director in an uh, VC platform, okay? And uh, it's quite interesting. I challenge myself to be a, not the KOL, but I'm a host in a online program. And recently I have written some of the articles in Hong Kong Economic Journal. So just now, if you can read Chinese, you can search me online. I have just published an article about how to change from corporate citizen to entrepreneur. So if you have some failure in entrepreneurship experience, you can have a look at that. It may give you some hints and also it's a good compass as well. Okay. So I have a uh, catch up and other latest trend. So just now Penny has mentioned about how the science students and engineering students, they join us in MBA program. So I have the company called YC and Nestle Maker. I have just started another company. So just for when information is very new. So I didn't announce it uh, properly. So I help some professors and also some uh, inventors. They have some concept and they have some IP on paper. 
So I gather a group of programmers, engineers, and make them bring it to a new product to reality. So I help them to bring the dream to reality. And YC is another company. I help them to advise in their expansion or fundraising. So they are not alone when they are being hammered by the investor, <laughs> when they're challenged in the fundraising. So this is how I try to build up my own business. And this is exactly the transferable skill set that I have distilled from the experience in my corporate life, as well as what I have worked in the family business as an entrepreneur. Okay, so more or less about me. So about the courses that I teach in CHK, so for MBA, so right now, uh, apply entrepreneurship have been stopped this year, but I'm currently teaching the creative, uh, sorry, creating self-efficacy and also impact in communications, which I'm going to show you partially about the course today, and also design thinking for business innovations. And I'm also teaching in Sunjen, CHK Sunjen. So I'm trying to learn Mandarin. Actually, it's teach, it's, it's, the teaching medium is in Mandarin. So my gangpu, okay. <laughs> And as well as I also teach in CHK engineering. So all the students there are postdoctoral students and they are actually professorial grade and they try to bring their ideas and invention into commercialization. So that's why I have another course there. I link up my students together with um, some engineers. So that's why Jeffy has just mentioned, I have bought some uh, new projects and even though after their graduation, they can come back and join the parties here and join the mentorship network. And this is a lifelong learning process, okay? And as an alumni, actually I'm doing this for free as well, just like what Wen has mentioned. <laughs> I'm also the mentor and also advisor, but not in the you know official uh, framework. And this is the best class that I have ever conducted in uh, CHK. And Jeffrey and Frank was there as, were there as well. So we invite um, Alan Seaman, you know him, right? Okay, he works uh, in Ocean Park. Yeah, so he is actually one of the guest speaker in our courses, and he is the one to grade you guys if you join my course. So you will have the one minute uh, pitching to him. So he, if he is impressed, he will hire you. Okay, or at least he will give you an interview chance. We have some students who successfully impress other CEOs and got the interview opportunities. And some of them, they got the real job opportunities after the courses. So this is exactly what I want to um, contribute back to the universities. Compared with other universities, I will say that CUHK have a strong, much, much, much stronger alumni relationship. This is the only difference that why I am so loyal to CUHK. My undergraduate is here. My master degree is actually over here. Okay. And for students who are online and from China, so don't uh, don't worry about that because this course is well recognized in China as well by the Ministry of Education. So this course, CHK MBA Communication Class, is actually um, ranked by China as the top twenty courses in the past five years time. Okay, especially in entrepreneurship and also innovation area, and. Thanks to MBA team, Roanne and also uh, Angie, they have arranged the video shooting. So it will be on there very soon. So you can also take a look. I know today we don't have sufficient time, but if you want to know more about um, the course content and also what it is about, you can also refer to the link, which we'll share by MBA office very soon. Okay. So I think um, what Wen has just mentioned about career switching, you find a new job and career progressions, I find that there's another major reason why some students are thinking about choosing MBA. It's about networking. The networking is not only about business. Sometimes it's about personal networking as well. Yeah, I have witnessed quite a lot of couples. They were together after the program. So no matter you want to have a progress in professional side in career, starting up your own business or finding your personal network in the future, communication is the key. So that's why I started this course four years ago, okay? And what is an effective communication? I search it online and find a quite interesting thing. It's not from me, so the credit is on it. So 
most people make PowerPoints because they have no power and no point. So writing work have no work to say. And those using Excel don't excel. And those using SS have no SS. And the ultimate truth is that most people skilled in Microsoft Office are both micro and soft in the office. So that's why I will say communication is actually not inborn. It can be learned. And in our course in CHK MBA, we will train you guys not only an expertise in your own field, but a generalist and also which can be managed the company on top. So this is exactly my vision as well. And this course is designed for non-English native speaker because I'm also a non-native English speaker. So compared with other people, maybe you will have some self-doubt. My English is having strong Chinese Cantonese accent. Same to me. So what? I'm also working for a British-based company, Dyson. They are family business. They are not listed company. They don't have to report to the stakeholder and shareholder publicly. So they have strong discrimination over those people who cannot speak in fluent English. Exactly. I am there to say it. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. Okay. So that course is helping those people who overcome your communication barrier. So I overcome my barrier as well. So previously when I was studying, I also hold my class. Okay. And I'm quite nervous rubbing my hands here. So you see, I can witness all the transformation like Frank and Jeffy is much better <laughs> because Frank is younger. <laughs> So actually he was holding some papers during his first presentation. And right now, when you see his sharing, he actually challenged himself. So we are not comparing with one and others. We are challenging ourselves. We are comparing with ourselves after the course, after the program. So this is what I want to bring to you guys. And we have a very sophisticated and path to bring you to an effective communicator. So what Olivia and also Franklin have just mentioned about the fundraising, we will also teach you the investment pitch. It will be a 10 minute pitch. If you pitch over a panels, they are giving you millions of US dollars. What you will say in just 10 minutes in order to impress and secure the funding. So this is exactly what we will teach you guys other than the one minute escalator pitch. And just some um, of the slide from my course. There are five no principle in communication. This is what I've learned in Johnson and Johnson. Okay. You need to know what they need to know before they know what they need to know or don't know and let them know through your presentation and communication. So seeing through people is very important. Seeing through people. So you know exactly what they want. You adjust your speech on the spot dynamically. So how you can do it. So I will teach you Enneagram communication. Okay. So the Enneagram approach is it's not a psychological test. It's not just a simple test, but I want you to experience it. So I hope you can read the text here. Oh, not sober. Is it the Zoom issue? Okay. Okay, good. So please help me. Please help me to rank on these two sides. So there are two groups of text here. So A, B, C. So you choose the one which best describe your personality here. And there's group two. You choose another one that's best representing your personality. So for example, if C is the best and on group two, C is the best. So my personality is B, C, okay? Would you please, for online students and also for the participant here, help me to rank between these two groups and find out the best descriptor of yourself on the right-hand side and left-hand side and mark down the A, B, or C, or X, Y, Z. Okay, please help. I will give you three minutes. I can take a short break.
Okay, James, uh, I know you are right, you have written down BC, so you are online uh, student. So what I mean is that you have to choose one from group one and one from group two. So you have to pick whether B or C is better describe you and also choose another one from the group two, X, Y, Z. Okay, so James, please uh, revise your answer. Most of you have finished. Okay, great. So anyone need some more time? Okay, keep the answer in mind. So right now, what I want you to do is that, so if you have got the answer, for example, BX, okay, your personality type will be type nine. Okay, so you know how to read the charts, right? Okay, have you got the numbers? So if you are AX, the type will be type seven. If you are CX, okay, not Cathay Pacific, okay, but you are type two. So James, you are BY, so you are type four. So James, you are type four. Okay, and then after you got the number, you can get the name of your personality on the charts on the left-hand side. So James, you are romantic individualist. Thank you. Okay. So have you got your number? Yes. So please help me to vote and to put down your number and let's see how our talk today has the distributions of personality. Thank you so much. Excellent. Okay, we got it. Actually, it's pretty much the same like what we have conducted class. Whoa, it is expected. So we have the most number of type three achiever and type six loyalist. It's actually similar to the personality that I have the statistic in the past three years record. Okay, so quite good. Not bad. Huh? Type six is getting more. Okay, we have we have type one reformer as well. They are professionals. So you're actually very good at advancing yourself. So that's why you are here. And type three, of course, type three achiever. You want to get one more certificate and put the put it at the back of your wardrobe. Okay, so that's why it's a big collection. Type six, I'm still need some more time to figure out whether you're real type six, because most of the type six people, they are actually type three. Yes, yes. Oh, so you know about any of this, excellent. Okay, so we have some more type five and type four are coming. Usually after pandemic era, we have more type four, type five and type nine students. Previously, we don't have so much type four, five and nine because they are low energy level group and they want to hide behind the scene. And it doesn't mean that they are not intelligent. They are still intelligent, but they don't want to be, you know, if, if the name and language is about extrovert and introvert. It is not true in anywhere, but it is easy to explain. So they are more tends to, you know, um, the latest group of people who will speak up their own opinions. So after pandemic, we have the Zoom class. Okay, we have the hybrid mode. So they are more willing to join the info sessions and they are willing to type. And also they are good at typing as well, compared with 
speaking up and raise their hands and be the first batch of people to talk. So usually type three, type seven, and also type eight. Congratulations, you're the highest energy group people. So usually you are the first batch of people to raise your hand and speak up in the class. So it's a very good comparison. So if you are not such kind of personality, maybe when you are writing down the numbers in your questionnaire, you're under pressures or you're not, you are not so sure about your current status. Okay, but if you can compare with your daily behavior in a group discussions or in your company, whether you are the first batch to speak up, you will be the highest energy group. So it's quite, it's quite a good news. So we will get quite a lot of newcomers very soon. Okay, thank you, Wen. Okay, so thank you for your help. And going back to the chats, and I will let you know how to see through the people in a very short moment of time. So just now, if you can have a, for example, team building with your own companies, or maybe you can ask your boyfriends or wife or husband, or you can observe their behavior. And it is not difficult for you to identify their normal basic desire and behavior. Okay, this is how I teach my students to see through the panel interviewer during the interview, and they can adjust their presentation and also their answer. For example, I just picked some of them. I know I cannot go through all of them. For example, uh, one of the ladies, which both of them knows, okay, so I don't name her first. <laughs> and she was having an interview in a very famous co-founding iBank. And the final panel interviewer, she is the one to interview her. And her competitors are all from um, our, our friendly competitors, universities, okay? They are also MBA program graduates. And she was the final one to pick out of those batch of candidates. It's because she observed correctly that the interviewer is type five investigator. Type five investigator, they focus on numbers and they are very slow in presenting themselves. It doesn't mean that they are not intelligent again, but they are processing a lot of scenarios here, like Dr. Strange, okay? A lot of possibilities in his mind. So actually they are processing a lot of things here. So instead of presenting herself in a qualitative way, what she has done previously or what she has in her experience, she changed to quantify all her previous experience by numbers. Because type five investigators, they love quantifies a lot of things. So finally, she can impress the investor. They are using the same language. And this is how she adjusts her pitch in the final round of interview. And she was the one to be picked. Okay, so another friend, um, my client, he is working in McKinsey. And then he said that one of his bosses um, always loves overrunning, dragging in the meeting. And he called me up and asked me for some advice how he can stop him. And I asked him to observe his personality. And finally, he gave me the same result. It's also a type five investigator. So he loves numbers. So the next time I advised him just by twisting something. Okay, so boss, if you want to spend 10 more minutes, it will be causing how many numbers of managing hours here? Because you know, all of the people here, and then the RI is that low. So do you want to continue for another 10 minutes? And his boss immediately stop anything and ask all the people to go home. Okay, so this is how you can reframe your communications and this can be learned. So we can, if there is some volunteer here, okay, anyone is type three achiever and you want to share. Yeah, you're not a <laughs> All right, do you mind disclosing your personality type? You're type three. Okay, so you know Enneagram before. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So you type three and sex, but you are, okay, but from your behavior, if we need to read through, may I have your name? I am Sharan. Sharan Begani. 
So you were in my online class before? Uh, no, I wasn't in your class, but uh, I've done this test. A lot of my fr uh, classmates, they always wanted me to have this test done. So I did it twice and I have always got this result. Okay. So and it's actually very uh, true. Very I'm, true. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm that kind of a person. Okay, so guys, he is not my student. So we are not, you know, <laughs> collaborating in advance. Okay, so how about your communication barrier? Is it something like you want to show up in the, you want to be the spotlight of the class? Um, yes and no. Mm. So in situations where I feel very confident and I know that, uh, yes, I can do this, I would want to, but uh, in situations where I'm a little dicey or just not sure, I'd rather be in the back seat. Do you know why? Uh, image conscious or probably not wanting to show that I do not really know things. Okay, very good. So that's why I use Enneagram communications. When type three is under pressure, so there's an arrow here, the red one. So it will change from three to type nine. Can you see the arrow? Okay, so for achiever here, so if you are under huge stress or pressure, you will tend to be a peacemaker. So what is the normal personality of a peacemaker? You will tend to hide at the back, okay? Not feel anything and have a serious problem of procrastinating. So that's why all the type three students, they will send me all the homework by 23.59 of the deadline of the day. So if you have such kind of behavior, it's a recognition that you are a type three achiever. And Enneagram is really good because we can project people's change under stress. You know what I mean? So if you have done this or maybe other type of fake five or other kind of research on your personality, it may be good for researchers. But if you really want to be a dynamic consultant, or at least it can be applied to your team as a management someday, it is good to predict your bosses, your peers, your subordinates' behavior. And it will be very good for you to grab the opportunities for your promotion as well. Because if your boss is a type three person, don't try to steal the credit from him or her. You will die very soon, okay, and very hard. So that's why if you understand your boss's behavior and your beloved one's behavior, you will know which will be the traps not to step on. You will know what kind of languages that he or she will like. I'm not asking you to, you know, shoe shining people. Still, you have to deliver the solid fundamentals. It's a way how you present and how you polish your way of presentation. Okay, so as a type three achiever, so my advice to you is that when you are really confident and when you are under spotlight, try to manage your energy downward because the other six type of people, they are middle to low energy and they will be under huge pressure when you speak too fast. And usually when type six, sorry, type nine, type four and type five, when they listen to type three people presentation, they will think that, oh, he's too fast. You are giving me too many information and I am in huge pressures and they don't want to listen to your presentation anymore. So going back to the ladies which have the iBank interview. So she is type three and the interviewer is actually type five. So they are in two extreme of energy level in the two spectrum. So she slowed down her pace and tone and manner and adjust it in the sense that type five people can perceive very well. Other than twisting all the language choice of words. So this is exactly how I will teach in the class and how you can see through the people work closely, especially if they are investor, they are going to give you money, how you can gain the trust in a very short period of time. Got it? Okay. So. I'm concerning about the time. I know we are running out of time. So just a little exercise, okay? So who are they? They are the best team in Chinese history, <laughs> fiction one, okay? 
So they are the best team. They can get, they can complete the mission finally. So who is who? Okay, who is the personality of? What is the personality of the monk? This one. Okay, so let me challenge my students. <laughs> Frank, you have studied for two years. <laughs> okay, maybe Jeffrey. <laughs> Pick one. I anyone. I'll any. take the right one, the monkey. The monkey. Type three, obviously. Why? Because he's result oriented. Yes. And I believe that no one will disagree with me. His outlook is much better than the rest of them. And <laughs> he has hair, right? The rest of them they don't. <laughs> so uh Frank has just mentioned one of the key trails of key tricks of um type three achiever, they care about the outlook. So usually all the achiever here, they are handsome guy and also pretty ladies. And we have most of them are handsome guy and pretty ladies today. So it's recognized that we are type three achiever. Okay. How about the pig? Very obvious. He loves, he enjoy life. Seven. Yes. Okay. So just a small, you know, just a small amount of time you can grab it. So he's type seven enthusiast. He loves playing. He enjoys a lot of different stuff. And type seven students are very obvious. Their concentration level cannot last for longer, cannot last more than 30 minutes. So every 30 minutes, I have to take turn. Maybe I have to play a video. My, maybe I have to do some voting. Okay, I have to play the tricks here and then they can concentrate. Okay, so if you're type seven, you have to find some job which can you know, not staying in the office for the whole day. Otherwise you want to commit suicide. Okay, so that's why some of the, most of them, they are second rich generation, most of them. And I would advise them instead of staying in the office, maybe you can talk to your parents, maybe you can talk to your relatives, you can change the mode of work. You can still have the overtime working, but maybe you have to go to some banquet or market visit and going back, and talk to the pantry ladies, and then you go back to your seat and doing some work and have some meeting. So to change up more work can help. Okay. So do you want to take some more challenge or you can pass to Jeffy? <laughs> we didn't align in advance. So I, I do have a test to my students, okay? The test and the exam. So the perfect man. Is it the perfectionist? Yes. It tips for me yeah. and loyalist. Yes. Okay. Um, somehow he is a peacemaker. Yes. Because whenever these two guys are fighting with each other, he wants to restore the peace. And the loyalist is the horse. Yes. He's the loyalist. So that's why this team has a very good diversity and why the monk is the perfectionist. So, perfectionist is the reformer. He always follow the rules and regulation. He wants himself to be perfect. So whenever the monk, okay, or the monkeys, they want to um, play some tricks or maybe do some shortcut, he think, no, I have to follow the rules and regulations. So type one people, usually you are good auditor, good judges, okay? And they come here for studying because they want to have some self-advancement. They challenge themselves. So there's a very big distinguishment between type three achiever and also type one perfectionist. Type one perfectionist, whenever I told them, oh, you got 99 mark out of 100. They said that they will focus on, oh, Tina, why that one mark I can't achieve? Okay, what should I do in order to be perfect? But when I told type three people, you are the first in class, he doesn't care whether he got 50 or 20 out of 100. As long as I'm the first in class, I feel happy. Okay, so I'm quite sure these two gentlemen are all type three. <laughs> so even though I didn't talk to Frank and he is actually type three, when, when the first time he holds the mics and he talks, all the behavior personality has can be observed. It's very obvious. Is it? Not today. <laughs> okay. 
So this is how you can see through people. And during the course, we can have some one-on-one -on -one coaching session as well, because in the beginning, you see that I have got the professional coach certificates from International Coach Federation. So this is how I will teach the students. So some current students here, so we will have the coaching session, okay? And you are not alone. So no matter you want to have some interviews or you, you want to have some advice after your graduation, they can always switch me out. Just simply send me a WhatsApp. <laughs> okay. So some student credentialing, so I will share later, but uh, this is the final fruit of thoughts I want to share with you before I pass the mic to my students. Um, if you don't want to spare the time to create a life that you don't want, okay, you will be forced to waste even larger amount of time to do with the life that you don't want to have in the future. So act now, okay, it's just a, you know, few hundred dollars of registration fee, is it? Yeah, because when I was young, like you guys sitting here, hearing all the info section, I'm not sure whether I can be admitted. So why don't you just give a few hundred dollars and then have the chance to have the interview and take some learning. And after you got the offers, you have the time to think and choose. And I think uh, what Olivia has just mentioned is really good. The terms of membership fee is really good. The earlier that you join the member, join as a member here, the longer of economic value that you can recognize for the rest of your life. So study earlier is actually better. Okay, so this is the two piece of advice that I want to share with you. And if you want to stay in touch with me, this is my WeChat. You can ask my WeChat and we can talk more. And of course, I will refer back to Wen and his team for the admission. Yeah. So maybe we now have uh, Jackie for the sharing, right? Thank you. All right, everyone, this is Jeffy. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Professor Choi, for all her advice. And also, of course, uh, thank you, CHK, for these uh, sharing sessions. So for me, uh, I think when I first think of today, topic what to share, uh, this is my, the first 10 times come to my head. My transformational experience in this individualized course. I think in the past uh, 30 minutes, uh, Tina has demonstrated what is transformations and how he how she can actually provide individualized advice to us. So for me, uh, what is changed? So maybe the first thing that you would look for for a MBA program is that career development, of course. For me, I do in this particular KPI, I do have some progressions after my MBA program uh, from a local product manager to a senior product manager and then to a regional product manager and is responsible for uh, several APEC countries uh, for the Google portfolio in my company. So uh, it's really some progressions. I think this is just my progressions. It's uh, maybe not your interest. What your interest may be more in what I learned here, is it really uh, meaningful for you? And is it helpful for your career advancement? So let's take uh, Anagram as an example. Uh, the communications. Uh, I do remember that uh, when I get the interview of the regional product manager, uh, I analyze my boss. And I analyze, yes, before. So I do some research and I know that she is really a professional. So when she asked me uh, about the team, how I'm going to structure it, crystal clear. So make everything crystal clear and make things accurate. And this is some language for her. Again, uh, this is not, um, you can provide strategic that in every communications. And this could help me to figure out uh, how to influence people better. And this not just applies to the boss, but also my personal life, my wife. Okay, so after, uh, apart from the external communications, uh, the internal communication is uh, even more important for me, I think, uh, that the personal growth. So I think uh, one very uh, unique thing that uh, Professor Choi, when compared to all other professors or all other uh, MBA program, 
I think is that she really provides us a very personalized tips that helped me to grow. For example, uh, can you guess my top actually? Okay. So I'm actually a free uh, achiever. So uh, that this is the tips that maybe around two years ago, what Professor Choi gave me after a two hours, one, one sessions advice, which she can actually charge us uh, 20,000. Wow. Uh, I I cannot pay that. Okay. <laughs> I treat you dinner. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. So that's, it is not very expensive, right? Our MBA tutorial fee. <laughs> okay. So uh, I think the uh, individual tips you can see here is really some spiritual growth. That uh, I think with this, uh, if I use a more lady, um, um, la another language is that it really enhanced my AQ or EQ so that I can get through all the challenge that I see in my daily life. So with this, all these tactics, all this strategy help my career grow. And I think that this is applicable for our daily life. And this is why one last line is that I think all of us here will think about is an MBA worth it? For me, of course, uh, it's worth because it's really a transformational experience. And to be more precise, I think uh, Professor Choi do give me individualized uh, comments or directions to grow. And I hope that you can get this advice too for your individualized directions to grow towards your next step. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I prepare nothing to share anyway, uh, but I need to speak one minute. Uh, let me ask uh, some of you guys question. If you agree, uh, raise your hand. Uh, can I get to know how many of you would like to have a uh, income increment after finish the uh, MBA pro program? Salary, yeah. yeah. I didn't count, I don't know. Anyway, the second question is, uh, how many of you would like to have a career transformation after graduation. Oh, same people. I was ignored by some of you. Anyway, the last question is, uh, let me think, uh, what is it? How many of you would like to be promo or have a uh, higher position after graduate? Oh, okay, I'll share my experience with you. Uh, what I have uh, granted after the uh, MBA graduate. I have first salary. Uh, my salary is triple times raised uh, after I graduate from the MBA program. Uh, secondly, I successfully transferred my career from banking industry in the past to the fintech area. And the last one is uh, I was just an associate working in the uh, corporate and investment banking to serve the financial institution customer in the past. And now I'm an associate director working in the fintech company. Yeah, so that's it. I hope you guys will enjoy the MBA program if you get admitted. Thanks.